please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Banks. Oh, it means big deal actually because uh, banks, uh, of course, are making a lot of losses on provisioning for NPAs, but uh, whatever losses they have made on their bond portfolio can now be provided for over four quarters instead of just that quarter itself. Uh, already, if you remember, uh, uh, SBI reported losses of 3,400 crore on its bond portfolio in the third quarter. There would have been some minor losses in the fourth quarter as well. Now they can uh, spread it over four quarters. Only thing is they have to make a disclosure. But this is not uh, an unalloyed gain. The uh, uh, RBI is also asking banks to create something called an inf uh, investment fluctuation reserve, which uh, uh, into which they should put in an amount every quarter, not less than the profit they make on sale of investments. The idea being that uh, they create this fund so that uh, in future years when they make losses, they can draw down from that fund whenever they uh, invest in excess of the requirement. The minimum that they have to do is 2% of their bonds that are uh, that they have placed in their available for sale and uh, HFT or that is held for trading category. Uh, short point, they have to keep a reserve of uh, money and that can smoothen out the fluctuations. The immediate gain is that uh, banks will not have to report huge losses on their bond portfolio. They can spread it over four quarters. So tomorrow, expect public sector banks uh, to react extremely positively on this. Okay, so we'll get you more analysis on that story. But uh, speaking of breaking news, the deadline to submit bids for the bankrupt SR Steel has ended. We now have a new player in Vedanta throwing its hat into the ring. Ritu joins us now with the details. So, Ritu, uh, the deadline has ended today. Take us through what you know. Well, uh, two players on suspected lines and one surprise element in the form of Vedanta Group is what we have as far as the bids in the second round for SR Steel is concerned. As you said, 5 p.m. is when the deadline to submit firm bids ended. And these are the following players that have submitted bids first. ArcelorMittal, no surprises there. This time around, they've tied up with Nippon Steel to jointly bid for SR Steel. The second one uh, is New Metal. And now in this consortium, uh, the ineligibility criteria really the last time around was Revan Troya's existence in the consortium, who, remember, is the son of the promoters of SR Steel, which is uh, Ravi Roya's son. So this time around, we understand the consortium has come without Revan Troya. Instead, JSW Group, again a surprise entrant, has come in as an investor along with New Metal. Remember, it has not bought out Revan Troya's stake. Instead, it has just come as an investor along with the New Metal consortium. We understand that Revan Troya's stake has been absorbed by the existing partners, as we reported earlier. And the third party in the surprise element here is the Vedan group. Now, they remember, Vedanta has already won uh, Electro Steel Steels, uh, at least been declared H1. So this yeah. is the second asset that it is bidding for. These are the three bids. Uh, but do remember, the bids will not be opened until the next NCLT hearing on the 4th of April. Yeah, but Ritu, there's two surprises there. One, of mm. course, is Vedanta, but the other surprise is JSW tying up with, the, uh, with New Metal. Absolutely, Shaheen. And that's the bigger surprise. Remember, Sajan Jindal, Sajan Jindal just last week was talking about stating. being given the opportunity to, to mm. bid for SR Steel, and, and I guess he's found a way. Absolutely. I mean, he could not bid in his, uh, you know, JSW in its sole capacity could not bid because uh, lenders had made it very clear that only those players that had submitted expressions of interest in the first round will be al allowed to participate in the second round. Also keeping in, uh, keeping in mind the shortage of time because 29th mm. April is when the 270-day deadline ends. So they didn't really have time to invite new players and to open the data room and conduct the whole due diligence procedure, which is why they came up with players with, uh, you know, with, that had submitted even is only being invited. But of course, JSW, as Mr. Jindal has been saying, did not really need to see the data room. They were very confident of their bid. Of course, they could not be, uh, you know, could not be allowed to participate in their sole capacity. Therefore, they have found a way and they have now come on board as an investor with the New Metal Consortium, uh, solving problems for both of the parties, so to say. No, actually, if I may button here, I think it also makes uh, the uh, uh, bid much more evenly, uh, uh, you know, balanced, balanced or it's a big tug of war now. Yeah. Uh, JSW is a huge force to reckon with. Mm. They did not get any of the steel assets. I mean, they didn't get into electric steel, yeah. didn't get into Bushan steel, didn't get into Bushan steel and power, mm. and uh, were not there in the SR, even in the expression of interest. Yeah. So this brings them 
and uh, along with new metal's force mm. new metal now becomes a force to reckon with yeah. because you can't laugh away jsw it's mm. a big heavyweight so that makes it two big heavyweights so it's not a done deal who uh, sr will go to not at all. and for me the big story is tata seal did not apply it's it's oh. now three heavyweights <laughs> okay it's it's three heavyweights now lata there's vedanta vedanta oh, yes. there as well so there's three of them now Absolutely. but shreen cci you know uh, a lot of people when we asked jsw earlier in fact why they had not come for forward in the first round itself to bid for SR Steel. Many cited that they could face CCI issues, competition commission issues, uh, because of their already mm. large presence mm. in the mm. West. So how this bid will be taken forward, of course, they're not the majority no, the partner West, in the consortium. There's so much of imported steel coming. I don't know. I think they missed the bus and now they've boarded the bus through new metal. I don't think competition commission was the issue at all. Yeah. Uh, my sense is that now the SR story becomes extremely interesting with, as you say, a big three, mm. a, a powerful three horse race. Yeah, Ritu, there was also another interesting development that had taken place, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the Orissa uh, pipeline, uh, pipeline development as well that could <laughs> Slurry new metal paying up the well, money that could actually impact the way that this pans Absolutely. out. Absolutely. In fact, yeah. that slurry yeah. pipeline is what is used to transport the bulk of iron ore to operate the Hazira plant uh, that SR Steel has. And buying the Orissa slurry will actually give the partner an advantage. Now, new metal, uh, you know, uh, so far lenders had rejected their claims, uh, their deal, so to say, with Stray Infra, which they had inked to buy 70% stake, uh, saying that uh, lenders' approval was required to buy stake in Orisha uh, slurry pipeline. Because because SR Steel lenders itself also got impacted. Now, because of these dissenting lenders, the case was taken to the Delhi High Court, uh, where the, uh, the sale of Orisha uh, slurry pipeline was stayed. But now we understand that New Metal has come forward to back uh, Shre, uh, to back uh, the consortium and said that they will refinance the dissenting lenders, which essentially eliminates any approval required uh, from the lenders that had a problem to begin with, which should pave the way from the, for them taking a 70% stake in this pipeline, which definitely definitely will give them a clear headway uh, when it comes to SR Steel. Oh, absolutely. And also, SR, uh, Arcelor does not have that advantage. Yeah. So it also <laughs> puts, uh, you know, Arcelor will have to make mm. other uh, arrangements for the, but, uh, for, you know. But uh, the Orisha uh, slurry pipeline uh, sale is not completed, so to say. It looks like uh, it is going to new metal. But of course, the final mm. stamp of approval from the NCLD, from the lenders, is still awaited. Not a dull moment in banking. <laughs> Unfortunately, never. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think we've also got uh, Jayesh Mehta with us, Lata, on the story that we were talking about just before we got caught up with SR Steel. Absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, Jayesh, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, well, first up, uh, uh, this would be a big relief for, for public sector banks, you think? Or do you think the requirement that, you know, you should put all your uh, profits in an uh, uh, investment fluctuation reserve uh, kind of takes away a little bit of the joy? No, no, I think it's a great joy because uh, uh, they anyway need to create and manage the mark to market. Mm. So from that perspective, but it's it's quite uh, easy. It's like 2% over the next three years, uh, IFR, uh, which you need to create, mm. which is good, actually. So I think uh, the most most sorted relief, uh, uh, which Absolutely. I think the banks were asking for, maybe maybe trying, attempting mm. to ask, they didn't officially ask, mm. attempting to ask in January. Finally, they got it uh, in the new year. Yeah. So, you know, I can't, uh, I mean, uh, you are not a public sector banker, but if you were to be in their shoes, uh, Jayesh, would you start buying bonds now? Uh, you all have, uh, the public sector bankers have stayed out of the market for the last three months. Now, with this big relief coming from Reserve Bank, you think they will be back uh, to their buying ways? I think so, because I think uh, uh, in last two, three months, uh, they were uh, very much clear that they don't want to add up uh, mm. anywhere. If they are running excess SLR, they don't want to add up anything more. I think uh, with this dispensation given, uh, uh, um, I think they, they should uh, maybe not immediately the first week, but I think definitely they will come back. So okay. uh, that's the hope. And mm. once they come back, I think we have a good uh, reduced first half. Okay. Uh, borrowing as well to help the bond market. Yes, I'm coming back to you for where do you see the bonds tomorrow. But before that, Anand Narayan is also with us. Uh, Anand, uh, well, your thoughts on the entire uh, set of uh, measures announced by the Reserve Bank, both uh, giving more elbow room for provisioning, but coming with uh, a creation of a reserve which will prevent future such requirements of forbearance. 
Well, uh, evening, Lata. Look, um, at first read, this sounds like a happy new year fiscal year for mm. uh, public sector banks mm. coming from the RBI. Um, you know, this is a bit of a surprise, to be honest, yes. because uh, when the RBI was asked by industry bodies uh, for forbearance at the beginning of the year, mm. uh, as you know, in fact, uh, they got a bit of a lecture. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> January the 14th. And, and, yeah, and, and there was a bit of a um, discussion about how we shouldn't be asking, or banks shouldn't be asking for forbearance, really. Uh, so from there, it seems like a climb down. Mm. Um, I'm not sure uh, what the value of this climb down, to be honest, is. Because everybody will know what the total extent of losses is. Mm. They will have to disclose all of that. Mm. Uh, sure, they get the benefit of uh, spreading the loss over four quarters, but mm. with full disclosure, every investor worth the salt will take those full numbers into account. Mm. Having said that, bankers have got what they wanted. Mm. Uh, the bottom lines will, at least on, 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 a, on a headline basis, be uh, lowered. Mm. As you know, in, the, in Q3 particularly, mm. uh, all public sector banks registered huge amount of mark-to-market uh, -market losses. losses. Yields went up by 70-odd basis points. Yes. I think State Bank of India showed 3,400 crores of loans on Absolutely. itself. So those numbers uh, obviously will get spread uh, uh, out. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, one technical issue which was uh, dogging the market since January 14th, mm. which was public sector banks kind of uh, sulking and staying yes. away from the market, that hopefully should be behind us now. You, okay. know, with you think if you were a public sector banker today, you would be buying tomorrow? Look, the, you've got what you wanted. Okay. Now, after that, you can't say I'm going to stay out of the markets, right? Okay. So you should be back in the markets. And plus, as Jayesh Bhai was saying, with uh, you know the H1 bonanza, which the government has given as well, of mm. a very, very uh, bond market-friendly uh, program for, mm. for borrowing, mm. lower amount of bonds and lower duration, mm. uh, you have all the ingredients for public sector banks to come in. And I agree with Jayesh Bhai. I think we see a rally tomorrow. Okay, uh, uh, exactly. Maybe... That was my next question. What tomorrow? 7, uh, 7.3, 7.25, 7.2? I think 7.25, again, uh, top of my head, 7.25 seems very doable. We mm. closed at close to 7.40 uh, uh, previously, right? Okay. Um, so I think 7 quarter is very doable. Okay. Um, and at least the technical issues and the issues of supply and demand uh, and the supply mismatch, mm. uh, that's behind us now. Mm. Having said that, you know, after the initial bruha and the rally, uh, I think we should go back into the normal uh, fundamentals. Uh, you know, we aren't out of the woods as yet. Mm. Uh, the twin deficits are there. Oil prices are where they are. Mm. Global markets are looking uncertain. And this is an election year. Mm. Who knows what's going to happen on MSPs and inflation. Mm. So, you know, eventually we'll have to settle down and at, at maybe about 7, 10, 7, 20 kind of levels. 7, uh, 10, you said? I think we could see uh, initial oh. rallies. But eventually, Lata, I do still think that markets will remain uh, kind of nervous over the course of the year. Okay, okay. I wouldn't be surprised if in the second half of the year we actually see these going up again. Okay, 710 sounds uh, uh, like a number we haven't seen in a long time. Jayesh, uh, your guess for tomorrow and for this week? No, sir, I think I completely agree with Anand. It's like uh, 720, 25, I would say, but we still have a policy coming up in three days. Uh, mm. uh, as usual, uh, people will expect uh, some, some highlight and... Um, thing on inflation and which of course people do have it in their mind mm. so maybe initial stop 720 uh, in next few days 72025 mm. maybe a rally a little bit but again i still would say june july uh, we would have the yields a little bit hardening up so even if it touches 710 before that uh, it, it it will start unless you have some new more positives coming in Okay. Uh, will, uh, uh, you know, this uh, in, in, uh, investment fluctuation reserve uh, decrease the profits that you may make? Uh, you know, for, for instance, for, say, uh, the other banks, the HDFC banks, the ICSA banks, the Access banks, the Yes banks, which did not have this uh, question of overinvestment and, uh, uh, you know, stuck with losses. Uh, Anand, do you think uh, this will actually reduce profits because you have to pull it away Pull away your sale uh, profits from sale of investments and put it in reserves. No, sir, I'm actually trying to uh, understand this particular part of the circle a little yeah. better. Um, and I've, to be honest, I haven't gone, I haven't understood it completely. Mm -hmm. When it says the lower of the net profit for the year, less mandatory appropriation. Yes. Uh, is that for treasury operations or for the whole, whole bank as a whole? It's not very clear to me. It should not be more than two percent of your held for trading AFS portfolio. So it's not a great deal of money, but still, that much will be reduced from profit, wouldn't it? It seems to suggest that's the minimum amount, yeah. um, and it, it, it doesn't specify what the maximum amount could be. Look, at, at first read, um, 
this this is after all going to be a reserve to be used for a rainy day mm. um it it does sound like something like uh, you know an accounting smoothening kind of operation yes. which is not yes, very yes that it is that it is but will it impact the bottom line was my only question i i think not not, not to a large extent okay. i think the bigger issue right now was the fact that bond losses were dramatic over the last couple of quarters yep uh the spreading of that pain i think would more than compensate for uh, you know uh, whatever you might have out of the yes. reserve being built up mm. and as jayeshwai was also mentioning there seems to be ample time for building up this reserve and it starts with the next fiscal okay so um, so maybe not an immediate issue as such no it's But not I, an I, issue I, also there's one last line which perhaps will be positive as well whatever you keep in the reserve is eligible for tier 2 capital tier 2 capital that's so right it's so it's not putting the money to sleep it's not putting the money to sleep but it frankly it's not a very comfortable feeling okay. because it does allow you to uh, smooth out profits and losses over the course of okay. multiple years which is i don't know it, it's a policy issue but uh, now one has to read this a little more better okay well uh, let me just leave you all with a thought the rbi has climbed down a bit on the provisioning on uh, bond losses will it climb down on npa as well uh, that will be the big question that uh, the markets will now uh, grapple with uh, is it in a mood to give up or at least give a little uh, that question will certainly be uh, speculated by the markets tomorrow thank you very much jayesh mehta and anand for joining us we need to take a break more news and updates uh, follow on cnbc tv 18